Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about a new piece of kit that I've been playing around with that I think you'll really enjoy. I know we usually talk about After Effects and After Effects related things on this channel. However, I would like to talk to you about something new from my good friends over at Boris FX. They've recently released their Particle Illusion system as a free standalone downloadable cross-platform uh, kind of thing. This is a powerful particle system that comes bundled with a continuum from Boris FX, which is some really high-end stuff. So so to have access to the particle illusion system for free is uh, kind of mind blowing. Now I'm, I'm sure you all know what particles are. Particles are, you know, those little, little motes of stuff that float around like you see behind me here. In a scene, you might have thousands of these little things moving, tumbling, interacting, bouncing off of each other, simulating fluids or whatever. The more impressive a system is, uh, usually it has way more particles and making sure that your system isn't getting bogged down and slowing with this stuff can be really challenging. Something that's really impressive about particle illusion that I think is always been impressive about it is that it's pretty much always real time, which means you're able to really quickly iterate and dial in your desired look and behavior for particles. So we're going to dive into this thing. We're going to look at what this app does. We're going to make some cool stuff with it. And if you want to follow along, head on over to Boris FX, use the link in the description, and you'll be able to get your hands on this thing for free uh, right now, which is pretty awesome. So go ahead and get that and join me on a little particle adventure. So we've got Particle Illusion open. We got our stage here. We got a timeline. Uh, we got a bunch of emitters. Particle Illusion is preset based. So we need to start with some presets and then start customizing it uh, to our needs. So let's see, let's have a look what we got. We wanna pick an emitter uh, that already has some of the motion that we want. So maybe you're looking for something fire related. So let's see, let's have a look through here. Something with fire. Uh, oh, here's a wonderful uh, explosion. And you can see up in this corner, a little preview of the explosion, which is great. Uh, and then we got uh, some fire clouds. Okay, all right. How about a flamethrower? And you can click in this window and blast around uh, where things go. Maybe fire is not for you. Maybe you want something like uh, frost, uh, like maybe uh, some complex frost. Have that fill up your screen with some frostiness. Or, you know, we even have some trails that wherever you click and move around, that's where the particles are gonna come from. I'm just gonna start with one that I know is easy to get a handle on, this kind of speed beams. So I'm gonna double click on that and it's gonna drop it down on the stage. So we've got a layer and now we've filled that with an emitter here. And you know, you can go and you can you can disable, you can duplicate, you can turn into a super emitter, which is like emitting an emitter, so you can get even more layers of complexity. But for now, let's stick with this. If your stage isn't the way you need it to be, you can go up here, you go view, project settings, and you can get all kinds of frame sizes and duration. So maybe 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second, but you can dial things in all the way up to 8K in here. So you can get quite big here, or you can make all kinds of custom sizes. Maybe you need some vertical video. Maybe uh, this is gonna be a TikTok background. I don't know, but I kind of love that idea. It would please me a lot to see way more particle effects on Instagram and TikTok. With that dialed in, we need to start dialing in more things. So here are our properties, and this is where a lot of the customization is gonna happen. What can we change about this? And what do these numbers even mean? So it's all hierarchical. Right, so we've got our layer and we can change the position of the layer, we can move the whole layer around if we want, we can change the whole angle of the layer, wee, if we'd like. And then when we get into the emitter, then we have properties of the emitter, such as the shape of it. So right now it's coming out of a point, some come out of lines, ellipses, areas, circles, you can switch that around if you like. You can preload the animation, so it starts playing uh, before this thing even starts. And then we get things like uh, the tint color. So here, I'm gonna say, let's tint it to a nice bright blue. And right away, nothing really changes. And that's because a lot of these things down here are describing the percentage of change that's being applied. So for example, the tint strength uh, is at zero. If I put that at 100, obviously we're tinting this thing up all the way and somewhere in between. But many of these are at 100, and that's because they're expressing 100% of the particular particles uh, that are down below. So overall, if you're just like, well, I want 50% of the particles out here, and just type in a 50 and you got half as many particles, right? This is what percentage of the particles do you want? Or maybe uh, the life, I want it to live uh, for 50% of the time or 200% or of the time, you know? And this will alter 
what goes on with the rest of your particle system. So the first thing I want to do is kind of zoom in on this. So let's zoom in, right? And you can change your size in the X and Y, at least on this emitter. So we can we can make these things thicker, or we can even make them thinner in general, or make them larger. But zooming in uh, seems to have gotten me where I want to be for this. Okay, so I think I'm good with my kind of top level changes. Let's get more specific. Let's dial in and get even more specific. We've got something called slide beams. What is that? Well, if you want to find out, just go ahead and disable and then enable and you'll be able to see, oh, that's exactly what particle I was looking at. So that's these these purple buddies here uh, going around. And again, you can dial into there and, and get really granular. So let's change the color of the slide beams. So we can go in here, change the color. This is one of the easiest things to do. You just uh, double click on here, give it a new color. Let's go to blue. Okay, cool, they're blue now. Well, hold on, I don't want them to just be one color. Let's add another color. So this is a gradient knot, so you can drop in some knots in here. And let's see, let's go blue to red, nice little purple in the middle, cool. Hit apply, when you look at that, we got some, uh, some blue to red going across. And you can say, hey, don't give me the full gradient. I want you to pick a specific color within that gradient. Oh yeah, now we're getting a little bit more, more specific. Things are getting fun. But you can change things at a particle level. So there's 219 of these bad boys out here. So we could dial this up and say, I want more, please. Let's get more of them out here. 400 of them, whatever. Maybe make them live longer. You know, let's make them live like 25. Okay, cool. But it looks like there are fewer of them around now. That's how. That's what that happens to, to look like. That's how that change kind of manifests. Now, that is because particles change over their life, right? How do these change over their life? Well, their size uh, could be changing over their life. And these red, red boxes indicate that something about them is changing here on the timeline. So any of these things that are over life, you can have a look here. And this is uh, from zero to one, as in their entire lifespan. This is having a linear change. Uh, they're changing from, from being zero size up to being 200%, 200 size. So that's a change that's happening over their life. And you can dial that in uh, down here uh, as you like. So if you, wanna, if you want them to start at 100%, 0%, I don't know, that's up to you, but you can dial in all kinds of their change over life. Usually you see this expressed as kind of a graph in all kinds of particle systems. But then there are just things that you can keyframe over time. So you can keyframe here, you got your turning on keyframing, and then you've got going next and previous. And let's see, what is this doing? It's size on the Y is changing over time. And if you want things to not be keyframed, you just switch them to constant and don't worry about it, they are uh, donezo. So you can uh, you can dial this in as you like. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this as a static 400. Anything you don't like, just go ahead and change it. The world's your oyster in here. Let's see, I, li I like those slide beams. I wanna go into the thin beams. Tell me about your thin beams. Let's go into the properties. I'm gonna go into the actual image that it's using to generate these particles. And I'm gonna change that to, I don't know, a smiley face. <laughs> now I'm gonna change it to lightning. So we're gonna, we're changing from this one to this one and hit apply. And that looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really into this. Uh, let's add some more of them. Let's go like 150. Cool, I'm into that. And while I'm making these changes, I'm just gonna have this play through uh, and it'll loop. So it'll loop back on itself uh, as it plays. So let's see, let's go into the fat beams now. Let's see, the thick beams. Let's go into the shape here. Give me that other lightning. Yes, yes, this is doing it for me. What else can I change? This doesn't have any velocity. Let's give it some velocity. Let's get moving in here. Oh yeah, this is this is excellent for me now. I'm I'm feeling this. If that's its velocity, let me change the velocity over the lifespan of these things. So let's say they start not moving and then they end their life moving a lot. Should this spin? What if what if we give this some spin? Ooh, oh, mm, nope, didn't like that. Let's go back. Uh, let's see, 0.3, I think. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And then maybe something about its spin over life. Maybe it starts at zero and then goes up to one. Good, perfect, I'm into that. Once you've dialed in all of the motion, all the changes you like, you wanna go up here and hit render. Now, rendering, uh, you can send it out in a couple of forms. Uh, you can give us a, you can give it a ProRes MOV or maybe a, a .mp4, so you got those going on. But you can do all sorts of things like ProRes 4444 and include an alpha. So if you want to 
layer this on top of things you want to composite with it later. Totally up to you. If you're just sending out a background, then uh, maybe ProRes 422 is the preset for you. But if you need an MP4 for whatever reason, maybe you got to put it on social media. Maybe this is going to live as a background on something. A lot of excellent settings in here to play around with, depending on what you're doing with it. If you were using the plugin version of this, you wouldn't have to render at all. You just open it up in the plugin and there it is hanging out on your timeline in Premiere or Avid or After Effects. But we've only just scratched the surface of this stuff. We haven't even talked about forces. We haven't talked about deflectors. These are particles, so they do behave in accordance with those kinds of things. Let me really quickly, before before I'm done talking about this, uh, show you what that would look like, okay? So let's see, I'm just gonna disable this and let's get, let's have a confetti party, okay? So we've got a confetti party, the party is happening, and we can drop some forces down here, you know? Use the force, and let's see, I'm just gonna click out and create this force, okay? Cool force, it's not really doing anything. Well, it's not strong enough yet. So we can increase this, give it a lot of power. And let's see, let's uh, move this back in time. Here we go. So now we play it through and you can see this little turbulence pushing stuff around. What a jerk. Now, hold on, hold on. Just one box? I don't think so. Give me a grid of forces, okay? And now I'm gonna make this very big. All right, I'm gonna go like this and move this around here. Okay, good. Now let's see, I'm gonna turn motion blur off for now. And let's see, I'm gonna make this very big as well. Okay, so now we've got a lot of confetti coming down, a lot of confetti going. And in this force, everything's pushing the same way, right? So that's okay, I guess. Let me just increase here. Let's get that strength going up to maybe, I don't know, 2,500. Oh boy, it's really it's really blowing, blowing the confetti. But notice all these arrows are pointing the same way. This is one of the things I love about this. Okay, I'm gonna take the direction variation and give us 45 uh, degrees of direction variation. Now look at this storm that's happening. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love the turbulence that happens uh, when you get this kind of thing going on. Um, it's so much fun and so easy to do. It's so quick, uh, so quick to update this stuff. All right, well, I guess that's it for this little overview. If you wanna see more stuff with Particle Illusion, uh, let me know, we can definitely do more videos about this, but I'm really interested to see what you make out of it. I know this thing is preset driven, so everything starts looking really cool, but it's when you start remixing and combining and really making this your own that it starts to shine. I hope this has been interesting and that you wanna go and uh, start playing around this thing yourself. If you wanna download it, head on over to Boris FX, use the link in the description and go ahead and get all this stuff for free. And when you first install it, make sure that you download all of the amazing presets that come with it. Boris FX has provided a whole lot of presets for this so you can get started from all kinds of places. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams channel. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, uh, more things about particle systems, more things about software, then uh, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more specific things about particle illusion for right now, I would really recommend you check out Boris FX's site for all of their tutorials and all of their help stuff. I really admire their dedication to tutorials and training for all of their products. If you end up making something with this app, I would love to see it. Uh, tweet it at me, tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams on those places. And you know what? You should tag Boris FX on there while you're at it. I'm sure they would love to see what you make with their app. If you like learning about motion design, visual effects, and these kinds of things, then subscribe to this channel. Make sure you turn on notifications. We do a lot of things around here. Uh, tutorials, live shows, all kinds of things. If you like nerding out about this kind of post-production stuff, then you should definitely tune in for more. And if you subscribe, then I will see you around the internet. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.